Service departments and repair facilities are going to have to deal with the trends in materials and processes presented by the technology being put into new vehicles. Well, some of the biggest trends that we're starting to see are the continued use of advanced high-strength steels, a number of vehicles employing mixed materials where we've got both aluminum and steel in the structure. And speaking of aluminum, we do believe we're going to see a lot more aluminum in the future as well. Uh, the introduction of carbon fiber on some vehicle structures on BMW on the i3 and i8, for example. Uh, a lot of these late model vehicles uh, have a lot of this new vehicle technology on it. And certainly with the F-150, the 2015 Ford F-150, we're going to be dealing with a lot more aluminum. Uh, we certainly believe that there's going to be additional aluminum vehicles in the future, um, as well as uh, new carbon fibers and other types of composites. Uh, we're going to start to take a look at a lot of these materials uh, from a repairability standpoint. The advanced high-strength steels that we're looking at in today's vehicles really have had the most significant impact on the overall repair process, and they continue to evolve at a rapid pace. Uh, Honda, for example, is now introducing a 1,500 megapascal material from a tensile, st st tensile strength standpoint uh, in the side aperture on many of the structures of their vehicles. These ultra-high-strength steels are extremely heat-sensitive, and they really prohibit us from doing a lot of the straightening that we might have done on a vehicle just five or ten years ago. Uh, also, because they are heat sensitive, uh, we have to change our welding methodology uh, when we're working on the vehicles. Uh, realistically, we have to change our, our approach to the entire repair process from the damage analysis process when we first walk up to that vehicle, uh, trying to identify uh, what types of materials are we going to be dealing with on this particular model, and then what are the repair implications of that. Uh, we need to take a look at our shop infrastructure and identify, do we have the proper equipment? Uh, do I have the proper tooling and training available? And certainly, do I have the access to the OEM information, uh, the OEM information to perform complete, safe, and quality repairs? Those are all significant factors that uh, we're really facing on, on today's vehicles. And then we start taking a look again at that Ford F-150 with the aluminum structure that it employs. Um, it's going to be such a popular vehicle, and it too requires new tools, new equipment, um, and certainly training. We're looking at new GMA MIG welders for aluminum, which uh, typically have not been found in the collision repair facility. Uh, and then when we start looking at the rivet and rivet bonding technology required to repair that vehicle, uh, the majority of shops across the country currently aren't using rivet and rivet bonding techniques to repair vehicles with self-piercing rivets and other types of rivets. Uh, so that's going to require a modification to our, our tooling as well. And then there's a, a training impact associated with the use of GMA MIG welding aluminum and rivet, rivet bonding technology. And that's one of the areas that, that ICAR uh, actively participates in.